All right, so we learned what are called linear span and linear independence. And they were related by a theorem which said that if I want to expand my linearly independent set, then I have to pick new vectors from elements which are not in the linear span. Is that okay? So, we will try to get deeper into it and come out with an idea which will say that I the maximum linearly maximum set that you can think of which is linearly independent will give us some ideas about certain size of the vector space and similarly, the linear span will also get related all right. So, let us get with certain definitions which are important fine. So, definition what are called maximal linearly independent set and minimal linearly independent set linear spanning set also definition. So, let T be a non empty set. a non empty subset subset s of t is called a maximal set or uh, called a maximal subset of t with a property p maximal subset with property p if 1 s has property p 2 any superset of s any superset of s in t that is what in t does not have is that okay? important. So, I have been given a set t that is fixed once that t is fixed I define some property all right. So, I define a property p. So, fix a t which is non empty set define a property p now pick up elements from there in such a way that the set that you are making has the property p, but at the same time when I want to say it is maximal then I should not be able to add any other elements from t s. So, that it becomes it still has property p all right. So, let us look at an example to understand it better example 1. So, I pick this t as 1 2 5 7 8 9 10 15 16 17 I suppose I pick this at t all right. So, t is fixed fixed all right. Now, I want to study the property p p is the property that I am looking at p is the property of consecutiveness property of consecutiveness of elements is that ok fine p is the property of consecutiveness of elements from t I am looking at t is that ok. So, if I look at the set t I can just take this I can take 1 2 they are consecutive 1 to 5 is not consecutive 5 is in itself consecutive then 7 is consecutive because there is only one element in it 7 8 then 7 8 9 then I have 7 8 9 10 and so on these are the consecutive elements that I am looking at consecutive sets fine. So, what I need is I want to talk of maximal subset there is a difference between maximal and maximum. So, maximum leads to what is the notion of number of elements number larger smaller and height and so on whatever you want to talk of maximum is comparing things is that ok fine comparing with respect to those numbers and those things property here I am talking in terms of maximal maximal means it has that property that is all I am not comparing one with the other. So, for example, so it says that s has property p. So, if I look at one has property p, 
because there is only one element, so it is consecutive among its own elements. But it says that any superset of S in T does not have property P. So, this 1, 2 is a superset of 1 and it has that property, fine. So, therefore, S is not, this is not maximal with the property this P, with this property. Is that okay? If I want to look at 1, 2 now, if I look at 1, 2, then I cannot pick any element from T, adjoin it to it, so that consecutive unit is uh, still maintained. So, therefore, 1, 2 becomes a maximal, maximal subset with property, what is the property? Consecutive. Fine. Similarly, 5 is there, there is no problem with 5, because I cannot adjoin any element from T, so that this is lost. Fine. Any superset of S in T does not have property P. So, I cannot do that. If I want to make it consecutively, consecutive, then I need to add 6 to it. 6 is not there in T. Therefore, this is again a singleton 5 is also a maximal subset with property consecutiveness. Fine. 7 is not, because with 7 I can adjoin here, there is a problem. 7, 8 I can join 7, 8, 9. So, second part is lost. Again, I can join this. So, again that is lost, but this is nothing but again this maximal. All right. In 7, 8, 9, 10 I cannot pick anything from here. Similarly, I would like you to see that this set 15, 16 and 17, this is again maximal with respect to this. Fine. So, what we see here is that the following sets, 5 in itself, 1, 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 16 and 17. These are 4 sets, which are of different sizes but all of them they are maximal with the property of consecutiveness. They are maximal with consecutive property, the property among elements. All right. 5 in itself is a single vector or single element. I cannot join anything from T, so that it becomes consecutive. 1, 2, I cannot join 3, there is no 3 here. So, again 1, 2 is as it is. Similarly, 7, 8, 9, 10, I pick from here, I get that. I cannot either join from the left or from the right, hence it is the maximal set. Similarly, 15, 16, 17 is a maximal set. Fine. Another example, 2, suppose I am looking at R 2, all right. I, ca I can pick some vector say 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 4, minus 1 e, 5, 1. Suppose I pick this as my t, fine. Then what are the maximal? So, I want to look at maximal subset, subset with property of linear independence. Fine. So, I can see that I can pick 1, 1, 1, 2. This is a set which is linearly independent and from here I cannot put anything extra here to uh, still get linear independence, because as soon as I pick anything else. So, pick anything from here, pick any other element, then linear independence is lost. Is lost. Is that okay? Similarly, if I take say 2 1 and 3 4, if I want to add anything extra from here, then again I will be lost. All right. So, cannot add any other vector. Fine. So, if you pick any two from here, if you see pick any two, so pick 
any two vector from T, then they form a maximal linearly independent set. Is that okay? Now, this I am looking at any t, I can expand it further to say that if I just take t as r 2 itself minus the 0 vector, fine, and I pick two vectors from r 2 which are linearly independent, then they will form a maximal linearly independent set, fine. So, what we are trying to say is that I am trying to relate the idea of maximal with the largest size in some sense all right, of a linearly independent set, fine. So, given any vector space, I want to pick the maximum size, the largest size of a maximal linearly independent set, is that okay? So, let us go into that part. So, let me prove this theorem, a statement of the theorem. Let S is equal to u 1, u 2, u k be a non empty subset of a vector space v over f fine. If t is a subset of linear span of s, with linear span of s having more than k vectors, k vectors, this is more than k vectors, all right, k vectors, then t is linearly dependent subset of All right. So, let us try to understand what I am trying to say here. I am not saying that S is linearly independent. I am just saying that S is some set, which is non-empty. All right. Is that okay? So, I have some set S, which is non-empty. So, there are some vectors in it. There are k elements in this. So, there are k vectors here. Fine. Now, I am looking at the linear span of all these vectors. So, it is a subspace. So, I have a huge collection of vectors now from that huge collection of vectors, I pick any subset t, in which the number of elements is more than k, fine. So, suppose, so let us try to understand this. So, suppose I am picking a vector say w 1. So, let me pick t is equal to w 1, w 2, w m and m greater than k, such that each w i belongs to linear span of s, fine. 1 less than equal to i less than equal to m. We are claiming claim t is linearly dependent, fine. This is what it says. If I pick any subset of L s of s, linear span of s and that subset has more than k vectors then that subset is linearly dependent, fine. So, I will have problem when I want to increase the size in some sense, that is what I am trying to say. So, let me prove it. So, it says that w i s are in the linear span. So, when I say w i s in the linear span, what does it mean? It means that w 1 is some linear combination of elements of s, s has elements u 1 to u k. So, I can write w 1 as a 1 1 u 1 plus a 1 2 u 2 plus a 1 3 u 3 plus so on till a 1 k u k. I can write like this, fine. I can write w 2 as, so these are some scalars that I am getting. I do not know what they are, but this a i, so a 1 i, it belongs to f and I am writing w 1 as linear combination of u 1 to u k. I can do that, because each w i is in the linear span, fine. Similarly, for w 2, I can find another set of scalars or maybe the same set of scalars, I do not know, because I am not saying that s is linearly independent. I have got something a 2 1 u 1 plus a 2 2 u 2 plus a 2 3 
u 3 plus a 2 k u k I can write like this. Similarly, I can go till w m and write it as a m 1 u 1 plus a m 2 u 2 plus a m 3 u 3 plus a m k u k. I can write like this. Fine. So, be careful have a look at it nicely. What we are trying to say is that each of the w i's are elements of linear span. Since they are elements of the linear span, therefore, we can find a scalars that was the definition of linear span and linear combination. When I say that something is in the linear span, it means that I have a solution. So, I have some scalars so that I can write w i's in terms of u i's. So, I can do it fine. So, I can write this as if I want to see it nicely, let me write it in a different way, so that you understand it. So, I can write this as say w 1 as u 1 u 2 u k times a 1 1 a 1 2 a 1 k fine w 2 as again u 1 u 2 u k and again a 2 1 a 2 2 a 2 k fine. So, you can see that each of them can be written nicely like this. So, in general what I can do is I can write this vector w 1 w 2 w m as this part is fixed u 1 to u k u 1 u 2 u k is fixed and then I have got for w 1 it is a 1 1 a 1 2 till a 1 k. For w 2 I have the second set here which is a 2 1 a 2 2 a 2 k and for w m I will have a m 1 a m 2 a m k all right. So, I have been able to write w i's in terms of u i's with this new matrix coming into play for me. Is that okay? So, I have got this matrix for me which is w 1 to w m is u 1 to u k times this. Now, this matrix look at the size of this matrix. The size of this matrix is how many rows are there 1 2 till k. So, this does not look like does not look like look like a i j with i for the row with i for the row and j for the column. Somehow, it has got reversed all right fine. So, even though it has got reversed what we see is that there are how many rows first row second row till k row. So, there are k rows in this matrix k rows and m columns fine column number 1, column number 2, column number k m and they are coming from the columns are coming from here m columns in a due to m vectors in t and k rows because of k rows in a due to k vectors in S. Is that okay? So, this is the way we are doing it fine. So, now let me write this matrix as some thing here. Now, what we see that this matrix has the property that it has got how many rows? It has got k rows and m columns. So, this matrix. So, let me write this matrix as a m. So, m has k rows and m columns with m greater than k. So, if I want to solve the system m x is equal to 0, solve it, solve it then there are at most k pivots this implies at least 
m minus k free variables and since I am looking at the homogeneous system therefore, I have got infinite number of solutions. This implies infinite number of solutions fine. Since I have got infinite number of solutions, so therefore, I get that this will imply that has a non trivial solution say x naught. So, what I am saying is that this will imply that m x naught is 0 for some x naught not equal to 0 is that ok. So, therefore, now if I multiply this out with, so this is my matrix m. So, if I want to look at, so let us look at w 1 w 2 w m times x naught fine. So, look at this times x naught, then this is nothing but u 1 u 2 u k times m times x naught, which is u 1 to u k times 0, which is 0 fine. So, what we see here is that I have got a vector x naught consisting of scalars all right. I have got x naught non trivial so that this vector this collection w 1 w 2 w m times x naught is 0 all right. So, it means that I have got a non trivial solution and hence this set w 1 to w m is linearly dependent. This implies the set w 1 to w m is linearly dependent and this is what we wanted. If you look at the statement, it says that if t is any subset of linear span having more than k vectors, then t is linearly dependent all right. So, since it has more than k vectors, therefore, I could get free variables that is more important all right. I had k from k I had more than k. So, I had free variables and therefore, I got linear dependence that is important for us is that ok. So, now let this use this idea to come to the next theorem which is theorem this theorem. So, v is a vector space over f fine s is any linearly independent subset of v or oh, s is any maximal linearly independent maximal linearly independent subset of v. if t is any other maximal linearly independent subset of v over f, then number of elements in S is equal to number of elements in T. Number of elements in S is equal to number of elements in T. I am not saying that S and T have same set, same elements, I am not saying that. We are just saying that the number of elements are same. So, if you go back to the slide, one of the previous slides, this is what we had here that in R 2, I had picked up lot of linearly independent subsets each had only two elements, they could be different, but each of them had only two elements is that ok. So, this is what we are saying here that v is. So, I have to say that v is a finite dimensional, I will be assuming always that v is finite dimensional. Otherwise, I cannot talk of number of elements fine. So, from now on everything is finite dimensional for us, unless I say it is infinite, it will be only finite dimensional all right. So, what we are saying is that if S is any maximal linearly independent subset of T of V, T is any other. So, you have S and 2 which are maximal linearly independent, then the number of elements is the same all right and the proof is simple is that ok. So, let us try to understand this two steps are there step 1, step 1 S is maximal linearly independent subset implies linear span of S is whole of V. Can I say this fine? 
So, S is maximal linearly independent, what does it mean? I cannot add any other vector, all right, fine. So, I have, so maximal implies cannot add any new vector to S to maintain linear independence, all right fine. So, if I pick any v, so if, so if v is not equal to L s will imply that there exist u belonging to v minus L s and this will imply that recall the previous result that s union u is linear independent all right. So, recall that. So, if v is not equal to L s, then there is at least one vector u, which is in v, but not in L s and therefore, s union u will be linearly independent fine. We have already been given s was linearly independent, s union u will become linearly independent and this will imply that, this will contradict, contradict s being maximal linearly independent. Is that okay? So, be careful what we are saying. What we are saying is that S is maximal linearly independent means I cannot increase the size. If I cannot increase the size of the linear independent set, then that has to be equal to the linear span. Is that okay? Converse is also true that if S is linearly independent and linear span of S is V, then I get back maximal linearly independent, all right. So, what the previous theorem says that now if I look at this T is a subset of V v is same as linear span of s. So, from the previous theorem we understand that the number of elements in T has to be less than equal to number of elements in s. Why? Because T is linearly independent, T is linearly independent fine. Because if the number of elements in T is greater than if it was strictly greater here, if it was strictly greater, then this will imply that T is linearly dependent. This is what the theorem was that if I pick more elements than the spanning set, then I get linear dependence, all right. So, therefore, I will lose that part, is that okay. So, therefore, what we see here is that number of elements in T will be less than equal to number of elements in S. Similarly, if I start with T, all right. So, here I started with step 1 was starting with S and implying that number of elements in T is less than equal to number of elements in S. Similarly, if I start with S, I start with T, we will get that number of elements in S will be less than equal to number of elements in T and these two together will imply that number of elements are same. Is that okay? So, what we see is that for any maximal linearly independent set, in a finite dimensional vector space, the number of elements are same. So, take any v vector space finite dimensional is that okay? Finite dimensional number of elements in any maximal linearly independent set is same, all right. Since it is same, we can use this to define something. So, definition V is a vector space over F, then the dimension of V over F denoted dimension of V sometimes dimension of v over f like this, this sometimes this, then the dimension of v over f denoted this equals the number of vectors in any linearly independent subset in any maximal linearly independent 
any maximum linear unit subset of V. Is that okay? Dimension is number of elements in a maximal linear independent set, all right? Because what we have seen is that number of end of elements in any maximal linear independent set is same. So I can use that number to get my results. Is that okay? Fine. So example one. So if I look at say vector space V as R over R itself. Fine. Then the dimension of this over R is 1, because any vector, any scalar say 1 is a maximum linear independent set and which generates. If I take V as R 2 over R, then E 1 and E 2, these two all right, is linearly independent. And I cannot get bigger than that. If I want to add anything extra, I will have a problem and therefore, dimension of R 2 over R is 2. I cannot add any extra vector, they will become linearly dependent. All right. 3, I would like you to see that, look at this V and again C 2 over R over C. Then here, this vector 1 0 and 0 1 is a maximal linearly independent set and therefore, dimension of C 2 over C is 2. Here you can see that this set 1 0 i 0 0 1 0 i is a maximal linearly independent set and therefore, dimension of C 2 over R is 4. All right, we will come to this again after some time, but I would like you to understand that. Fine. Now, what is the basis definition? So, definition of a basis, let me write. So, V over F a finite dimensional vector space fine a subset b of v so non empty subset or non empty subset for us i can talk of empty also but then that is for the zero vector i don't want to get into that part a non empty subset b of v is called a basis of v over f if b is a maximal linearly independent subset of v over f all right so in the previous examples this is a basis this is another basis for r2 i can also think of the vector 1 1 and 2 1 as a basis of R 2. I can also think of E pi pi E as a basis of R 2. I can take any collection whatever it is. I just need them to be linearly independent fine. Similarly, these are the four elements which give you a basis of C 2 over R. E 1 and E 2 is always a basis. I also have if I look at the set of all matrices of say 3 cross 3 matrices over R, then you can see that these matrices which are I do not know whether I wrote it or not, but they are the type 1 0 0 0 0 0 this So, you can build up on this till finally, you get So, this is a basis all right. So, therefore, the dimension of this over R is 9. Is that okay? So, you can build up on these ideas yourself, spend some time fine. You can also look at somewhere else some notes and things like that and you can form it yourself. Is that okay? The last part is what is called. So, what we did was we had linear independence. From there we went to maximal 
linear independence all right the other idea that we had was what is called a spanning linear span fine from there i want to go to what is called minimal spanning set so what will be the minimum spanning set so definition will be that it should span so s is a minimal spanning set for v over f f if ls of s is whole of v and i'm looking at minimal any proper subset of s in v should not generate v or the same thing as saying that so take t which is a proper subset of s the linear span of t is not the whole space is that okay so from s you take out any vector even one vector all right so take out even one vector from s then linear span of s minus that single vector should not give you whole of v is that okay take out even one vector v i should not get the whole space is that okay so this is what minimal spanning set means so there is a theorem which says that theorem the following statements are equivalent the following statements are equivalent please note that i am still having finite dimensional with me v is finite dimensional for me everything is finite dimensional all right one b is a basis of v over f so basis means recall again b is a maximal linearly independent set all right two b is a minimal spanning set in v over f 3 b is linearly independent and spans v over f all right so try to understand what i'm trying to say i'm trying to relate the different ideas that we had what are the ideas the ideas were let's go back the ideas were we started with vectors in those vectors we had the notion of linear span that given set of vectors what is the largest vector subspace that i can generate then we also had this idea that given set of vectors are they linearly independent so if i'm saying that something is not linearly independent i can remove so re recall a theorem which said that if i have linear dependence and there is a vector the first vector is linearly independent is a non zero vector then i can remove all right uk is a linear combination of u1 to uk minus 1 all right fine so if i have a set which is linearly dependent i can remove vectors from them to get a smaller set which will be linearly independent fine so those ideas were there so what we are trying to do in finally here in this part is saying that i take a finite dimensional vector space finite dimensional means i am able to generate it using finite number of vectors once i have finite number of vectors look at that set from them i want to pick up the uh, smallest possible uh, spanning set is that okay that is one way of talking of things given s it is giving me the whole space from there i want to pick the uh, smallest size the minimal uh, spanning set that is one question that i am looking at what i am looking at is what is the maximal linearly independent set that i can get from that set s is given to me from them uh, there i want to pick the maximal linearly independent set so two questions i want to pick minimal spanning set i want to pick 
maximal linearly independent set two questions all right the answer to both the question is the same this is what it says this theorem says that if we want to go to maximal linearly independent set then that is also equal to the minimal spanning set and not only that those two together or that set itself has the property that it is a basis means it spans as well as is linearly independent is that okay so all the three ideas that start with any vector space which is finite dimensional you pick up a single vector which is non zero keep on building keep on adding extra vectors to it till you have exhausted all the space all right and at each stage your vectors were linearly independent your sets were linearly independent all right the collection of vectors were linearly independent then finally you will get a set which will give you the full spanning set that full spanning set will be linearly independent because that's the way you have added and that full spanning set will also be the minimal spanning set you cannot add anything extra is that okay so all these ideas are similar and i would like to end here itself this lecture think about it do some assignments you'll understand them Thank you.